What is going on? And welcome to me reviewing, reviewing, ranking every single ge Xbox Game Pass game of the year 2022. So let's get into it. It's going to take a, a hot minute, so I do want to get started here. Um, we should be all set up. I don't know. I can't see my recording. I don't really record on my computer. Um, so this is a different experience for me. Uh, and I was too lazy to edit the intro. So, uh, this is what you get. Uh, how do I, how do I, how do I, nope. I want that to go away. Go away. Thank you. And here we go. So we have every single game that came out on the Xbox in the year of 2022. And I played every single one of them. We're gonna rank them. So far, this is what my categories are. I might change them while we're doing this. Certified, must play. Absolutely awesome, incredible, but for someone else. That means that could be a must play, it could be an absolutely awesome, but not for me. Makes sense? Uh, something short of greatness, meh, Fistopheles, cause I thought it was fun. Uh, developers don't care enough. There'll be a few of those. 30 FPS or frame rate hell, uh, and just don't waste your gigs on it. It's not worth your time. I don't know if we're actually going to have one in that section or not. Uh, I felt inspired to do it, but anyway, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start right down here with seven days tonight. Now, all these pictures are not perfect. I went and got all of these by myself, um, and some of them didn't work as well as I wanted them to, and the... The way that you change them is a big old hassle. So uh, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. Just trust me. Or don't. You know, do what you want to do. Seven days to die. 30 FPS or frame rate hell. This game needs an X and S update. It is not meant for the Xbox One. The pop-in is crazy. The graphics are not great. It needs an update and it needs to run at 60 frames per second. If your game is 30 frames per second, don't even bother now a memoir blue i thought thought this was a very well done game that had some really interesting stuff if it's the one that i'm thinking of you get dumped in the ocean and it like goes back and forth between two game st gameplay styles um for me that was a mephistopheles maybe someone out there that is for but i couldn't see it myself <sighs> Plague Tale Requiem, the sequel to A Plague Tale Innocence, I think. Man, that's a tough one. I was looking forward to this game for so long. It is so pretty. It runs at 30 FPS. It is basically soup. Don't waste your time on it. If you get migraines, if you have motion sickness when you play games, when the, the frame, the, when the, the camera panning is not smooth, when there's a lot of jitteriness, jumpiness and stuff like that, that is not... The game for you, let me tell you. Amnesia Collection. Um, That one was also 30 frames per second. And I didn't like it. And... Amnesia Rebirth? God, I feel like my problem with it was it, it, it had something about it that caused it triggered my motion sickness. I don't remember what it was, but I remember thinking the game was meh. It was OK. Developers do not care about you. The ARC developers do not care about you if you are on console. Just a, just a heads up, the game runs somewhere between 20 and 100 frames per second with no amount of consistency. You have no ability to change how it runs. Like, I think even if you put it, I don't even remember if there's a performance mode, but when I, I could not get this game to work at a level that was okay. Like, it was so unplayable in, like, the swamp biome and stuff like that. I tried to start on different maps. I, like, literally the only place I could even get a moderate frame rate is if I'm out next to the ocean and there's, and I'm on the beach and there's nothing around me. The developers don't care. You could make this, you could cap it at 30 frames per second. You could make a nice performance mode. You could do something. It's been crap ever since they released it and they've never gone back and fixed it up because they do not care about you. Arc developers do not care. As Dusk Falls, absolutely awesome. I'm going to tell you how awesome this game is. This game is so awesome. My internet is crapping out. I got a video playing in the background. Look, it can't even play it. What's going on? 
Internet, you uh, suck. If you live in a rural area and you are suffering from internet issues, I feel you. Anyway, hopefully that won't affect my recording in any way. Let's continue. As Dusk Falls. So, um, this game was really cool. It's, it's a choice-driven game. Exclusively. That is what it is from top to bottom. I should have brought a beverage. <coughs> um, it is a choice-driven game from top to bottom. It's got a cool, complex story, bunch of different characters, moving parts, and then you get to make the decisions as to what goes on in the game. And it's so good. My mom played for like four straight hours. I was like, hey, mom, check out this game. See if you like it. She did. She played it for a long time, and it was cool. So it's not only is it a really cool and interesting and neat, well-written game with a cool art style, it's accessible. So if you got like a family member who likes crime shows and, and stuff like that, like Criminal Minds and those kinds of things, this isn't quite that, but it's got that like drama, uh, crime kind of feel, but you're making the choices. You're choosing what people say. Really neat. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Meh. Um, it was an open world Assassin's Creed game. Who cares? Weirdly, though. Assassin's Creed Origins was better. Assassin's Creed Origins had some really... This is bothering me. Like, I really just want this to play the video. Like, is the internet, like, crapped out to that point that I have no internet right now? I guess so. Anyway, we'll keep an eye on it and see if it, if it works at some point. So, Assassin's Creed Origins, I don't know what would make this a great game. I couldn't tell you. Uh, probably not being so... <sighs> here's a quest. Here's a quest. Here's a quest. Here's 50,000 little icons to go to, and none of them have anything super compelling, but I liked the characters. I like that these dudes show up to my house and punch me in the face, and then I got to kill them. And then I got to choose, do I want to just beat them up, or do I want to kill them? I killed them. I liked it. It was cool. Battlefield 2042. I mean, I'll give it a meh. I'll give it a meh. I mean, I really only played with bots. I didn't even care to try to take the game online because after 10 minutes of it, it was like, what's the point? If you've played Battlefield before, you've played this game. Go play a different Battlefield. This one really isn't going to bring anything to Battlefield that you have not experienced before. And it was very inconsistent and very like, I don't know. It just wasn't great. Felt like the developers didn't care. Uh, Beacon Pines, I think is what this is called. Beacon Pines. And um, it is like... Uh, twi God, what is that? Or is it Beacon Hills? I don't know. Anyway, it's like uh, that 90s show where it is real interesting and like all kinds of weird stuff happen. Can't remember the name of it, but it's like, it's, it's like a weird science fiction almost horror-esque story based game with a really cool art style i really liked it and if it caught me on the right mood where this is what i was into i would totally be all over this game it didn't catch me in the right mood i apologize like i gotta use my inhaler I, i've been having a uh, been having some like uh some respiratory issues recently i'm very sorry it's why i needed that drink That I definitely didn't get. Um, okay. It was a really cool game. It just didn't catch me in that moment. But again, I'm right. This is the same level as absolutely awesome. It's a, an incredible game. Not a must play, but incredible. Besiege. I hate to do this. I'm going to put this in developers don't care enough. The controller controls in this game were so cumbersome. And I've played enough console games and there've been so many good PC adaptations that work intelligently and work well. This was not one of them. This, this, this was cumbersome to get through. And it just, I don't know. I don't even remember. I don't even think it had a, an XNS update. I think it ran at 30 frames per second. Like the menus were real slow. The cursors and stuff were real slow. It did not feel good to play. 
And because it's on console, you have no ability to control any of that stuff. Getting screwed by the developers yet again. Bug snacks. Man, I want to put bug snacks. I'm going to put it in absolutely awesome. It might have been an incredible for someone else. It could have been in something short of greatness. Because I wasn't like dying to go back in and, and uncover all of the secrets of bug snacks. The only thing that made it intriguing to go back in and, and, and collect like all the all the go through all the little stories and the nooks and the crannies of the game is because it's really not that big. It's relatively small and contained. You walk into an area and you can essentially see everything that you're going to need to do right up front. You're like, oh, there's a thing there. There's a thing there. There's a thing there. Cool. Let's go do it. Neat. I love it. Super fun. <coughs> Man, I'm going to I'm going to struggle to get through this. I really should have got a water. Um, So I'm going to put it in absolutely awesome, but. Honestly, it could probably fall in something short of greatness. It was way overhyped, probably, no offense, because it came out on PS5, and anything that is exclusive to PlayStation 5, PlayStation players are like, it's the greatest game ever! I mean, you had people talking about how awesome Destruction Derby was when it came out, and then you watched that game flop into the abyss. So I don't know. It's my it's probably a little less than absolutely awesome, but I'll give it absolutely awesome because it's cute and it, it's a pretty smooth frame rate, which is big to me. Chained Echoes. I want to put this in absolutely awesome. I'm going to. You know what? Screw it. We're going to put it in absolutely awesome. I didn't play enough of it to really be like, oh, yeah, it's super, super awesome. Stays super awesome. But I played a little bit and it was cool. It had a lot of neat things. It had choice driven stuff where it seemed like my choices actually matter and any fantasy game where you set off a nuclear bomb how dope is that chinatown detective agency um i'm gonna put that in absolutely awesome too it is carmen san diego but for adults uh, you're like going around, you're solving crimes. You, if I remember correctly, you can also make the wrong choices and accuse the wrong people or you can kill people. I forget exactly the specifics. I remember being very impressed with it and really enjoying the time I had. I played the first, um, the whole first like crime or whatever. I played that all the way to the end. It was very cool. I really liked it. Chivalry 2. I'm going to say incredible, but for someone else. It really is a really cool game. It has so many awesome things where you're, please work. Ah, look at that quality. I think there might be 30 or 40 pixels on there. Anyway, Chivalry 2, really cool. A lot of fun. It is frustrating. One, you need a dope internet connection. I don't got it. So I'm like popping arrows in the people or hitting them with my sword and then I just die. Um, and I don't get any hits. Uh, I was just having a lot of issues playing it, but it was a lot of fun. But it's also I played with my son earlier this evening. It was frustrating. Like it was genuinely frustrating because it's. It's just it's just people running into the scrum and swinging their weapons wildly. And it just it's fun when you're winning and it's really a bummer if you're on a bad team because you just watch your whole team die. And it's like, well, you literally can't take on 20 people at once. You just can't. So it's one of those things where if you're on a bad team, you can't really like hoist them on your shoulders and carry them to victory. You're going to you're just going to lose and you're going to die over and over and you're going to get frustrated. I don't like online competitive multiplayer games anymore. Kind of over it. Chorus, something short of greatness. It was cool. But it was not smooth. It was smooth gameplay, smooth frame rate. I don't mean that. It felt like the gameplay loop just wasn't there. It felt like getting to my objectives, finding my objectives, 
and stuff like that was just a little more cumbersome than I wanted it to be. Um, it was it was perfectly fine. Like it was it was polished, but it just had like a few rough edges and it just didn't grab me. Like I'm kind of getting to the point where I don't always love the story of like you're the hero, you're the only one who can save everybody. Like I don't I don't really care about that being like the main story in a lot of stuff. That being said, my game of the year uh it has that exact story but makes fun of it the whole time. Citizen Sleeper. I'm going to put this as a must play. This game was really cool. Uh, you're like, uh, you're, I don't even know how to describe what you are. You're like an Android that's owned by like a company, but you get away, from, but you're sentient and you get away from the company and you're trying to live on this space station, but you're balancing your resources, your health, your items, your energy. You're going and interacting with the people and you're free to explore. <coughs> I'm so sorry. You are free to explore how you want to, but it, um, it, it was just real, it was just real cool and it was different. I'm a big fan of different. I hate playing the same games over and over and over. And that's why you're going to see if a game doesn't have something unique about it, probably ain't going to be pretty high on this list. Uh, pretty much everything so far has been relatively unique. The least unique thing might be Chained Echoes. And I do feel a little... Sorry, I'm having a cough drop now. You're just going to have to deal with it. Um, maybe Chained Echoes, but I didn't play it long enough to really know for sure. But what I played, I was very impressed with. Um, coffee Talk. Incredible, but for someone else. Um, very great atmosphere. Great characters. Funny stories, serious stories, and a very pleasing, like, coffee shop vibe. You're making drinks, passing them out, and you're just existing. It's very chill. It's very cool. Really liked it. But it's another one of those games where it would have to find me in the mood to play something like it. It's not like a, you just pick up and you're like, oh, my God, I'm blown away. It's one of those things where it's going to be for a certain kind of person or a person in a certain mood. Um, honestly, Commandos 3, I'm tempted to put an absolutely awesome. I had a great time with Commandos 3. Um, it shows its age. It definitely has some age issues and stuff like that, but I was a big fan of Desperados 3 also. And, um, yeah, absolutely amazing. Contrast. Boy, the gameplay, I'm going to put something short of greatness, but the gameplay is kind of rough. All right, it's clearly an indie game. Or at least when they made it, I think it was an indie game. I don't think they're an indie studio anymore because now they are with Microsoft. But this game... The gameplay was a strong okay. It had some cool puzzles. It had more frustrating parts than cool parts. Uh, I was not compelled to explore every inch of the environment. But the style, the story, the the environments themselves were very cool and compelling. They had really cool like story pieces and story moments that were exceptional. It has one of the most memorable story things that I have seen in the entire year. And um, I mean, you know what? I'll ruin it. <clears throat> there might be a little bit of spoilers in this. They they have a part where if you take too long. Uh, your mother, you are like a child who jumps out of like a third story window. All right. You're on the run. If you take too long to go and stop the fight between your parents in one part. Uh, your mom pulls out a gun and shoots and kills your dad. And then if I remember correctly, she kills herself. Real dark, like shockingly dark. The story in this game is sad. It is about a child from a broken home with an imaginary friend. It is not a happy story. It's good, though. Cooking simulator. 30 FPS. Your game sucks. 
because it's 30 FPS. Sorry, your game might not actually suck. Also, the controls were not good. It was not like fun to control the kitchen. It was terrible to control the kitchen. I hated every second of it. Um, honestly, you know what? Don't waste your gigs. Don't waste your gig. Go play something else. Do something better with your life. I'm downgrading it to literally as low as possible. At least there might be some redemption for these for certain people. Cooking simulator. There's better things to do with your life. Costume quest. I'm going to put it absolutely awesome. It's a really cool game. I had a great time with it. My son loves it, which is influencing my choice, I'm sure. But it's just like a light, funny RPG based on Halloween. Play it around Halloween, you'll have a blast. Cricket 23 or 22 or 23. I will say from my experience, it seemed to be a pretty solid game. I hate Cricket. Um, just hate cricket. That's it. I learned what a sticky wicket was. At least I think I at least learned what a, a wicket was. Uh, you like run back and forth. You hit a ball and then run back and forth between two sticks. And I'm guessing a sticky one is one that's hard to get away from or a difficult one to get to or something. I don't know. <clears throat> it's real weird because you like throw the ball at the batter. You try to hit them with it. Like, like that's your objective is to hit them with the ball. It's real weird. Um, honestly, in talking about it, man. Crossfire. Honestly, I'm going to put it in something short of greatness. It's at least on the level of these other games. Like, boy, it needed some some more love. They're trying. They took respawn. A studio that makes, wait, was it Respawn? I don't remember. It's it's the people who make Alan Wake, and it's the people who make Control. And they're like, hey, make a cool story for our campaign. I've long thought that it was a deal made when um, Xbox released the rights to Alan Wake back to the company. Um, that they were like, hey, you'll make a game for us at some point in the future and we'll let you have the rights to your game back because I think Xbox owned like the publishing rights or something like that to Alan Wake. They were very nice, gave it back uh, and then got this steaming pile of garbage out of it. <clears throat> you know why it's a steaming pile of garbage? Because honestly, if you look at the gameplay and Alan Wake and Control, it's not very good. It's flashy, it's pretty, it's got a cool story. But you are literally playing Crossfire in those games. You have a gun. You are shooting at spongy enemies who do not have good artificial intelligence. And that's the game. Cool story. It had a neat story. It was going in interesting directions. Like it had lots of talking. It had cool set piece moments. It had all the things that you'd want it to have. Except it had the, the gameplay of Control or the gameplay of Alan Wake, where the story in those games and the world in those games are so strong that you don't need to fall back on good gameplay. You only need passable gameplay. Well, in a first-person shooter where gameplay is king, you kind of need the gameplay. They didn't get it. I'm going to call that one a foul on uh, that company for just not being that great at it or not trying. Who knows? Like, they were doing their own thing. Like, why would they try? Doesn't seem to be affecting them any. <coughs> Crusader Kings 3. Man. I'm going to put it in absolutely awesome. But I also kind of want to put it in developers. Can I get a duplicate? No. I also kind of want to put it in developers don't care enough. Because... There's a few UI elements that, as far as I could tell, and I played the game for like eight hours, 10 hours, 16 hours. I don't know. I played a long time. And there were certain elements of the UI that I literally could not access with the controller. The controller even has a cursor mode where you can go and like select things and get information. But like there were literally things that I could not click on that the game was like, hey, go here and click on it. 
and then you can get the information about like your like who who are the rulers above you and who do you work for and who are you guys kind of enemies against and all the the breakdown of your relationships and stuff like that was literally impossible to get to. So I kind of want to put it on developers don't care enough because I don't think they actually sat down and played the game with the controller to its like full detail. I think they sat down and they're like, hey, it's passable. And then they put it out. They could have updated it by now. Who knows? It released with a million DLCs. So if you're going to if you're going to try to charge people that much money, at least make your game fully functioning. You know, you know what? Developers don't care enough. Screw you, Crusader Kings 3 developers. Get your crap together. Danganronpa 2. Absolutely awesome. That's where that's going to go. That's where that one's going to go. It was absolutely awesome. The original Danganronpa. That's a must play, baby. That is a must play. Uh-oh. These are going to get real big, huh? This is going to be a pain in the butt. All right, Danganronpa V3. I'm going to put it in absolutely awesome. I really enjoyed the time I had with it. But that being said, the formula gets a little old when you're telling the same story three times and you're trying to mix it up just a little bit. It doesn't quite hold up as well. <coughs> I am so sorry. Again, I've been having respiratory issues. Uh, I'm genuinely, genuinely sorry for the coughing. This is a lot of talking without any kind of breaks, any kind of drinks or anything, and that's my fault. DC League of Super Pets literally could not figure out how to get the game started. Um, You know, I must just be an idiot. You know, when you go onto a main menu and no button does literally anything, you can't start the game. As a, you know, 35-year-old who has played games since I was four or three. Um, started all the way back on the Atari. You know, I've probably pay, played a thousand, 2,000 games in my life, maybe. 1,000, 1,500. Um, you know, I must just be an idiot who uh, couldn't figure it out. Or it was just not designed well. Either way, don't waste your time on it. Who cares? Deathloop, I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it awesome. I've been kind of playing it again. I've been playing, getting through it a little bit and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to put it in absolutely awesome. I feel like I could definitely fall off sometime soon, but we'll see. Death's Door. Absolutely awesome. I don't know. You know what? We'll put it as a must play. It's one of the only games in this entire year that I actually played from beginning to end. I thought it was really good. By the time you're at the end, though, you are kind of like, let's wrap this up a little bit, please. But on the way there, it is a lot of fun. It's maybe just like an hour too long, and it's really not that long in the first place. Um, Despot's game. Honestly, I'm going to put this as a must play, too. These are my must play games, by the way. My must-play games. They are the games that, when I played them this year, had the biggest impact on me, or that I really love, which is Trigger Happy Havoc. A lot of these other games were very, very cool, but maybe they didn't have the biggest impact. Honestly, Disc Room, I'm going to put it something short of greatness, but it was absolutely awesome. It's like um, you're going from room to room, and there's different traps in the rooms, and if you do so well or complete so many objectives, you get, like, points that you can use on things and go to new areas but the gameplay loop just didn't grab me uh if it was like a roguelite or a roguelike with like some kind of objective in mind it might have worked for me a little bit better disney's dreamlight valley i'm gonna be honest with you that game was awesome that is what that is by the way disney dreamlight valley for sure i'm gonna keep pushing them back um i don't think when it came out it had an xns update i don't think i don't remember for sure but i don't remember it running at 60 frames per second but it is xns updated now i mean correct me if this game is 30 frames per second put it in the 30 frame the, the frame rate hell it can go down in frame rate hell and it can live there um but i had a good time with it 
I thought it was really neat. I liked hanging out with the characters. I liked exploring. I thought it was fun. It had a good gameplay loop. I enjoyed it. Respect V, incredible, but for someone else, this is a rhythm game. And I have none. I have no rhythm. So I'm sure someone would like it. It seemed cool. It was flashy. It had a cool graphics. It had a cool like, uh, like videos playing in the background and all kinds of stuff. It just didn't grab me. Dreamscaper. I'm really tempted to put it in absolutely awesome, but I'm going to say it was something short of greatness. The story did not grab me. It's like the story of someone like living on their own. And I think they're struggling with some mental issues, if I remember correctly. And they like have weird dreams. The story, the gameplay was cool. The It's a roguelite. I love roguelites. They were like maybe my favorite genre or one of. But I don't know when you're out in the world and you're exploring and stuff like that. It just it was a, it was a strong. OK. Could have been amazing. It was missing something eastward. I'm going to put this as incredible, but for someone else, because this is one of those games where you need to be in the mood to play it. It has an amazing art style and incredible graphics. They are stylized and they are awesome. The characters were interesting. The story was interesting where it lost me was it was it started too slow. It just does. It's I mean, I was going to say it's not the game's fault, but it is. It's like it starts off really cool, really cool art style, incredible intro movie. And it seems to imply you're going to be like fighting robots or doing some cool stuff like that. I played for like an hour and I didn't even get past like story parts. Like, I think I had the tiniest bit of action and then a bunch of story. It's one of those games where if I was in the mood, I would have loved it. I would have went straight through it, but wasn't. <coughs> okay. Edge of Eternity. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to put this in absolutely awesome. It had some frame rate issues which I'm hoping they worked on. Um, but it had a nice performance mode. It was pretty smooth. It had good standard JRPG combat that was solid. What I liked about it. Boy, do not get attached to those characters. Because if you think George R.R. R. Martin likes killing off people in Game of Thrones, you is wrong. Because in Edge of Eternity, I don't even think both of these characters make it through the beginning of the game. Like, I'm pretty sure one of them dies right at the beginning. Like, is is crazy. And they're not the only ones. Like, it is full. It starts out like, oh, haha, ha, we're happy. We're going to do a fantasy war. We're like Final Fantasy. This game's fun. And then people start to die. Like, you're like, oh, this character's going to be like this. They're going to be have so much fun dynamics. And this is going to happen. And then they get impaled. And you're like, oh. Are they going to bring them back to life? And they're like, nope. That person's just impaled. Oh, that person got cut in half? Well, they're dead. That person got smashed by a boulder. They're gone. Hey, look at this main character. They're dead. It was a bunch of stuff like that. It was crazy. It was really cool. Aiden Chronicles Rising. Something short of greatness for me here. This game has awesome gameplay it is a 2d fighter that is not like super complex but it has enough depth it's got abilities dodges where like you know if you're in a 2d environment enemies can only attack you so many ways so it kind of simplifies the combat but at the same time you have to laser like an ebb and flow to the combat that's very satisfying it's got great rpg elements um, cool inventories, cool weapons, cool items, bunches of, uh, I think I, uh, you play different characters if I'm not mistaken. I think I went out with like a second character or something like that. It starts so slow. There is an unlimited amount of talking. I wasn't into it. I just wasn't. Um, the story didn't grab me. Uh, the, the town that you're in and you're and you get to rebuild like a town and stuff like that. Stuff that I love. It just didn't grab me. Uh, that gameplay with like a different story, different environment, different characters. That would have been maybe a must play. So for someone, this actually might be a must. You know what? Put it incredible. For, but for someone else, I think there is a person that this story would speak to. 
and they would think this game was a must play. So I'm putting it up there. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trying so hard to get through this without 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 dying on you. My apologies. Um, Ember, absolutely awesome. Play this online with my son a whole bunch. You like get to go and put out fires. My problem with it, it is not balanced for anything but four players. If you go into the online and you are not with four people, there are going to be levels or objectives or things that you literally just cannot do. There's no like, oh, the fire spreads a little bit slower when there's only two of you. Or there's not like, oh, you know, you can play it this way if there's one. Per you play it solo. There is nothing like that. Like you need to have four people to really go in and complete your objectives and get through it. That kind of makes me want to put it on something short of greatness, but you know what? It was an awesome game. It's a lot of fun. Escape Academy. Oh, how are you going to do this to me? Escape Academy might have been my game of the year, but it was in frame rate hell. Can't do it. I can't give you game of the year if you're in frame rate hell. It's Hogwarts except for escape rooms. That's 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 my pitch. If you went to Hogwarts, but you weren't going to be a magician, you were going to be an escape room artist. That is what this game is. And it's so cool. I really liked it. It needs an XNS update. It needs it. It needs it. It needs it. Every game needs to be 60 frames per second or get it off of my console. I don't want it. I don't care if it's the prettiest game in the world. 60 FPS with a super butter smooth frame rate. Otherwise, migraines, motion sickness, tossed it in the trash. I'll refund your game if it makes me ill. Evil, an online social deduction game. Honestly, I'm going to put this in incredible, but for someone else, I'm not big into online social deduction, and I don't think this game is going to take off, unfortunately. There's too many that came out, but this game was cool. So, <coughs> I'm so sorry. So, in this game, you were in like a village, and, you know, you got the standard, like, there's a murderer or something like that. But, like, there's, like, a day-night cycle. You guys all have jobs in your village. You have your own homes. You can put traps up to stop the killers from killing you while you're sleeping. Um, you can do... you. There's, like, magic where you can, like, bring people back from the dead uh, just to, like, talk to them for a minute or ask them questions. Or you can raise them from the dead and find out who the killer is. All kinds of cool stuff. You can do, like, protection magic and... Just a lot of different and interesting mechanics that I did not get the chance to really dive into because the moment I went online, people started using some really foul language. F1 2021. Um, I'm going to say it's incredible, but for someone else, who knew that F1 drivers were the whiniest little babies on the planet? It's probably because they all grew up rich and privileged. Um. And all think that they're the best, so they're all a bunch of whiny babies. What What is that called? It's called affluenza. Affluenza strikes strong. Uh, man, could I make this smaller? I don't know how to do that kind of stuff on my uh, on my computer. So we're no far changing tides. This was a really interesting like puzzle game. You're essentially running back and forth. You're solving cool puzzles. I I thought the world was really neat and really compelling. And it's it's like one of those haunting, almost creepy worlds. Game didn't grab me, but it did seem really cool. I'm going to say it was incredible, but for someone else. Far Cry 5. <sighs> Something short of greatness. I, uh, Far Cry, I have a few complaints about Far Cry. I actually like the Far Cry games. I think they're pretty cool. I hate picking up items off the ground in Far Cry games. So, I again, talked about it a million times. Migraines, motion sickness, stuff like that. When I am, like, sitting down and trying to parse through, like, grass and wood and look for little containers that are roughly the same color and shape, and only when I am perfectly over them that I can then pick them up. It's like I'm sitting there doing a seek and find everywhere I go. I'm squinting. I'm focusing real hard with my eyes and stuff like that. It gives me migraines. And then I end up just leaving stuff. 
Like I don't even take the time to loot or pick anything up because it is too it's it's too cumbersome for me personally. I'm sure other people like it. I don't. And I didn't like the environment in this one. Like being in the woods, like meh, who cares? I got bored. Farming Simulator 2022. Jesus. Uh, Mephistopheles. I spent the first 20 minutes running through a grass field, and then I bought the grass field, and then my farmer did things on autopilot, and you're just a free-floating camera. Like, why? What? what is even the game? It's bad, is what it is. FIFA 2022. <laughs> you know, I can't be a good judge of soccer games, but everyone says that FIFA's really good. Especially for an EA sports game. I'll put it on incredible for but for someone else. Floppy Nights was dope. Floppy Nights is like a light RPG with like deck building turn-based battles. It was really neat, is really fun. You like grow like little plants and stuff like that. I had a lot of fun with it. Or you grow like little, like weird little monsters to fight. I forget the specifics. This, I played this a long time ago. I played a lot of games this year. I remember being enchanted and thinking it was really fun. We're going with it. Football manager 2022 or 2023, whatever the new one is. Um, I, I mean, I got to be honest. It was an absolutely awesome. Incredible for someone else. It was absolutely awesome, but not for me. Do this with American football, NFL, I would love it. Although right now I'm really angry at the NFL because they just screwed my Bengals team over by taking away our ability to get the number one seed, the number two seed, and now we have to flip a coin to see if we even get home field advantage in the playoffs, even though we won the AFC North. Um, but we don't have to flip with the uh, flip a coin with the Bills if we play them in the playoffs. Why not? Like, we had a chance to be in the number two seed. Like, and that was taken from... Mm, I'm mad. Screw you, NFL. Robert Goodell. I hate your guts. Hope you fall down some stairs tonight. For honor. You know what? Honestly, it's awesome. It's better than Chivalry 2. I said it. Fuga. Melodies of Steel. I'm going to say this is incredible, but for someone else. Because, my God, it was a very well done... Very serious story. Uh, and uh, I put a child in a cannon and shot them at a wolf man uh, and killed him and all of his soldiers. Does that sound cool to you? Do you want to sacrifice children to fire off a mega life cannon that kills people? And as your people slowly die, the story changes. It was really neat. I, I'm not here for it. I can't. Um, Garden story. Uh, I am going to throw it in. God, it was, it was well done. It was well done. It was a well done game. I'm going to put it in something short of greatness. I almost wanted to put it in Mephistopheles because it's not for me, but it's better than that. But it was missing something. Gears 5 absolutely awesome. I played this because the, uh, the game of the year came out version with the Hive Busters DLC, so I played Hive Busters. My God, Gears 5 is one of the most beautiful games that has ever been made. And the Hive Buster DLC is a visual treat, especially in HDR. Oh my God, dude, when you're riding down the lava river, it is, it is amazing. It's such a good game. It is so severely underrated, and hopefully there will be so many Game Pass players that by the next time the next year's comes out, people will play that one, and their minds are going to be blown. Ghost Song, something short of greatness, buddy. I already know. Um. <coughs> so sorry. Um. So. Um. Ghost Song, that's right. 2D kind of Souls-like game. The polish just wasn't there. Um, if you walk into an enemy, you take damage. I hate that in games. Like, make them attack me. Like, I want to, like, duck, dive, and dippy-dodge around them and their attacks and stuff like that. 
I don't want to like run and jump over an en enemy who's like setting up to shoot. And my foot clips the back of their head, and then I take a bunch of damage like they just attacked me. It's stupid. It's a bad gameplay design, and I don't like it. Gora Goa. Must play. Played, literally sat down, started it, and played it from beginning to end. That's how good it was. I don't even want to tell you anything about it. Just go play it. It's maybe two to three hours long. It's a puzzle game. Kind of. Just go play it. You will not be disappointed. It is a trippy experience. Uh, so keep that in mind. This is <clears throat> MotoGP 2021, 2022, something like that. Motorcycle game. Uh, you know, meh. It's okay. You get on the motorcycle. It goes wham, wham. And then you take a corner and you fall over. And that's about it. Grounded. I almost want to put this in developers don't care enough. You know what? I am. Because I love the game. I think the game is incredible. I think it is maybe one of the best survival games that has ever come out. If not the best survival game that has ever come out. So why, why is it choppy when I play it on my Series X? Simple question. Why is it choppy? Like you're, you can't reduce the, uh, you can't reduce any of the settings anymore to keep it nice and smooth. Like even when I put it in performance mode, it doesn't, it doesn't run. I, th I think there's performance mode, but like I have a VRR TV that I play on and it still is choppy. Like I think it's one of those things where it's running at like 59.9 frames per second and it's causing like a little bit of frame skip inconsistency it kills me and because i love this game so much same thing with crusader kings 3 loved it same thing with arc loved it all three of these games the developers need to do more because these would be on my must play that's what they would be they would be must plays and they're not <coughs> i'm gonna make it i promise um gunfire reborn i'm gonna put this in absolutely awesome I had a tremendous amount of time with it. I loved playing it with my son. It's not perfect. The characters are not made equal. Uh, some characters are way easier than other ones. And a run is going to last you like 90 minutes, even if you're flying through it. So those are kind of like my big complaints. Like I would have been happier if it was like maybe an hour max. Or there was like the option to do like a super big extended long run. There's not, but it's still awesome. Gungrave Gore. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put it Mephistopheles. It might be something short of greatness, but my feelings on it were meh. Um, Hard Space Shipbreaker. Uh, since I have found out that there is a 60 frames per second mode, you can go up and absolutely awesome. It's a good game. You break down ships. You buy upgrades and you break down bigger, more complex ships. It's just like one of those like satisfying things like um, Power Wash Simulator. Hello Neighbor 2, 30 FPS. It Worse than 30 FPS. It is like the choppiest game I've ever played. You pan the camera to the left and you'll watch like things go and then move back, go move back, go move back, go move back. Dude, like, how are you even going to, like, who is the person who plays these games and is like, yes, this is ready for us to release on Game Pass. This is how we are going to represent not only, like, the game developers are like, we're going to do this, but then Xbox is like, yeah, this is a good representation. I don't get it. High on Life, my game of the year. Genuinely, my game of the year. It has a completely normal and boring story of... You are the sole person who can save the world. That's it. But the way it does it is awesome. You get fetch quests and you get stuff like that. It never feels that way in the game because the world and the characters are so engaging. Like it gives you so many choices and so many options and the world feels so alive and the guns are so much fun. Um, it's definitely clearly an indie game. Like you can tell 
Like, I feel like people are rating this like it is a triple A title that was made on a colossal budget because it released on Game Pass because it was made by, I think his name is Justin Roiland, uh, the guy who makes Rick and Morty. Because of all those things, they are like comparing it to like God of War. This game is not God of War. Like, you're not comparing Unpacked to God of War Unpacking to God of War. You're just not. This game is so much more than the jokes. Like, it genuinely has incredibly compelling content that works on so many... The game rewards you for everything that you do or don't do. It will come... If you get to a chest in the wrong way... Like the suit, like the suit literally will come out and talk to you and be like, hey, uh, I think you did. You broke the game to get to this. Was it really that important? Screw you. And like, maybe not in so nice of words, but like the game will talk to you and make fun of you and will comment on things. It comments on everything that you do with every character all the time. It is so cool and so compelling. And when you feel like you're on a crap quest, your guns complain about being on a crap quest. Like they compl- they're like, oh, this is stupid. Like there are times where like you're getting mad and you're like, God, I just want to kill this person. And the gun's like, do it, do it, kill them, kill them. And they let you do it. It's, it's just one of those. Th- There's literally a part early in the game where you walk into your home and you have a talking knife and the knife says, I want to stab that guy right in the stomach. Let me stab him. Let me stab him. I want to stab him. Totally your choice. You can literally go up and do what the the knife tells you and stab him, or you could not. There's, There's so many things like that in the game where it's like, if you were in another game, you'd be like, oh, I have to do this because it's the quest and stuff like that. Sometimes you will get quests that not doing the quest is a quest too. I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it's not like everything is forced on you in certain ways. It's, I don't know. It's you, you are the catalyst for everything that happens in the game, but in a way that does not feel derived or forced or anything like that, because you're not forced. You get to make the choice. Do you want to just kill a random, like tied up person because you feel like it? Go ahead. The game will have something to say about it. The person that you're killing has something to say about it. I don't know. It's it's it is it is so. A step forward in video games that I don't think will ever be recognized for how incredible it actually is. Like genuinely. This takes the my big complaint on games. I'm sorry, I'm going on this a long time. It's my game of the year. My big complaint in games, and you'll see it in a lot of the games that I play, is that they are two the same. Like, some of the only ones that are two the same that are up here are Gears 5, maybe. Danganronpas, because they're like each other. Like, Dreamlight Valley is a little bit like Stardew Valley or Minecraft. But they kind of do their own thing, their own flavor, their own takes on things. Or try to introduce something new or different. Or like Gunfire Reborn. There's a ton of these roguelites on PC. They're not on Xbox though. So a lot of these games are unique simply by being on a console when they normally are not. High on Life is unique because it tackles normal stuff. Like when you're playing... This is my big complaint about Halo Infinite. It was a really cool game. I only played it for the story. Some of the gameplay was good. I like the gameplay in the original Halo better than Halo Infinite. That's me. But even that, like, it's it's so just go from point A to point B, fight guys, go from point B to point C, fight guys, little story piece, rinse and repeat. And... That was never what even was cool about Halo in the first place. But that's neither here nor there. So High on Life, it's it's awesome. Literally, I sat down. There is a point in the game where there is a Mystery Science Theater 3000 reference. Where you can teleport in a movie theater. And you can go into the movie theater. Sit down in the like a like a two rows behind 
three people up in the front and they literally watch a whole real movie. It was called, um, it was not blood harvest. That's another real movie in there. It's not Tammy and the teenage T-Rex. That was another real movie in there. It was, um, demon wind demon wind was the movie and they do a full commentary like joking thing with it i watched the whole thing i lived in that world for a long time is it perfect no it definitely has shortcomings it definitely has issues that would have been um relieved with like a much larger budget a much larger team and more time but i loved it it is incredible and I really hope that Microsoft makes a long-term contract relationship with that company because I want to play everything that they make forever. Absolutely loved it. We're really getting into the weeds now. Okay. Hitman Trilogy. I'm going to put this... I kind of want to put it as a must-play. You know what? I am going to put it as a must-play. Tons and tons and tons of content. And on top of that, Hitman 3 is so cool. It's so cool, dude. Like, it's it's like you're in the level to kill people, but, like, there's also other stuff going on in the level that are very complex and interesting that you can just mess with just for fun. Like, it has so many cool things. It's just a cool sandbox to live in. I'm going to put it as a must-play. House Flipper. Originally, if you go back and look at my videos, I say I like House Flipper more than Power Wash Simulator. House Flipper is in 30 FPS hell. The controls are not great. And honestly, after playing more of House Flipper and more of Power Wash Simulator, kind of out on House Flipper. <clears throat> Immortality. Incredible. Up for someone else. You're going through videos. You're trying to figure out, like, what's going on with the life of this actress and different things surrounding her and, like, the director and... I don't know if there's like a murder, but you're just like watching film and going through things and figuring out it's creepy. It's weird. It's like what I imagine would be like if you found like some weird haunted footage and you're watching it in the back of a library would be like. It was cool, though. Immortals Phoenix Rising. I'm going to be honest with you. I thought this was awesome. Um. I don't love the Ubisoft open world games like, you you know, I, I kind of poo pooed on um, Assassin's Creed and stuff like that. But Immortals Phoenix Rising was a very refined vision. It was comical. It was humorous. I thought it was pretty awesome. Infernex, I'm, I'm a little reluctant to do it, but I'm going to put it in absolutely awesome because it was absolutely awesome. It is a super punishing and challenging 2D like old 16 bit or 8 bit game where it's like an RPG and you're doing quests and earning money. But it is hard. I mean, it is hard. Now, does the game wear out its welcome or get repetitive by the end? Maybe I didn't beat it. But in the first like two hours or so that I played. It was dope. Definitely one of the better games up there for this year. Inside. Man, I should put um, overrated on here. If this game came out today as a brand new game, people would have rated it about the same as um, the going in the meh. Probably would rate it about the same as the game made by the people who made this game that came out this year. It's just meh. But, you know, you're lucky if you if you came out in the time during like Limbo and Braid. You really you really got to be like get legendary status. Insurgency 2 Sandstorm. I'm going to say this game was awesome. Really liked it. Um, it's it's like chivalry with guns, except you're only fighting bots. So it's not like chivalry at all in any way whatsoever. You're on a map and you're going and you're doing different things. You're taking objectives, setting bombs, maybe defending areas. I don't know. We died a lot. But it's like 16 players and you're against like AI opponents who are not very smart and are not very good shots, but there's a lot of them. And you're working together with your team to try to get these objectives done. I had a blast playing it and it seems to work really well, even with my crappy Internet. So because I'm fighting AI instead of another player, even my poor Internet, there are certain games that crappy Internet will let you play. This seems like one of them. I had a lot of fun. 
Jurassic World Evolution 2, absolutely amazing. Although, I almost don't want to put it there because Chris Pratt's voice, it... What'd I do? What'd I do? Uh, oh, Garden Story, I moved it up. Put it down here. Um, It's... I didn't like not having Chris Pratt and you have some guy who's just trying to be Chris Pratt and I like almost would rather you just give me a whole new set of characters to deal with. Um, go find like a nice uh, medium name actor and have them talk to me. You know, like go, go freaking. I mean, he's not a medium name actor, but <clears throat> go hire freaking Dwight to be like the guy who's like, uh, overseeing the next Jurassic World, like, site and stuff like that. And, like, let him talk to me. That'd be so funny. Um, Because they try to be humorous and cheeky anyway, but it does not land with, uh, you know, random guy pretending to be Chris Pratt. So, I don't know. You could have gone and gotten someone else. Like, there are people out there that would have been far more entertaining. But they didn't. Still, gameplay is great. Good, smooth, 60 frames per second. You get to make dinosaurs. Like, can't go wrong. Kentucky Route Zero, honestly. I'm kind of tempted to put it up here, but I'm going to say it's incredible, but for someone else. It's uh, story-based. You're going through, driving around, and then you're exploring, like, haunted areas. Am I the ghost? Are you the ghost? It was cool, but... Again, I'd have to be like, oh, I'm really in the mood for a haunting ghost story. Kraken Academy, I think, is a let is a must play. This game was awesome. It is it is a fantastical Hogwarts S school, but way crappier. It is it is it's like a school simulator thing, but there's like magic, there's like crazy like mythological items and creatures. And there is my favorite thing in movies, TV shows, and video games. There is a Groundhog's Day style story. Big fan. Big fan. It fun, fun characters. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Lappin. You're getting, getting Mephistopheles out of every game on this list. <coughs> and I played a lot of games. I do not remember this game, and I played it within, like, the last month. I have literally no memory of this game whatsoever. I looked up. I made the video. I did play it. Um, I have no memory of this game. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's not, but I'm going to give it a Mephistopheles because uh, it didn't do it. My God, Lawn Mowing Simulator. <sighs> I'm going to put it in meh, but you know what? There's someone who this is everything that they've ever wanted it to be. It's a little tempting to put it in incredible, but for someone else, it was well done. You know what? I am. It is incredible, but not for me. You get to go around, do jobs. You run your own business. You get to buy things. Smooth frame rate, accessible controls, uh, good control over your character. You get to do all the different things. It wasn't for me, though. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga? Absolutely awesome. It's almost a must-play, honestly. It was so much better done than I thought it would be. Like, for real. Like, way better done than I thought it would be. You got everything. Like, the whole city where the cantina is on Tatooine, the whole city is there. And you get to explore it and do stuff and go around and have fun. Like, and that's just the beginning of the game. And then you get to go, and I've continued playing it with my son. You go, and you you get to steal the um, the Millennium Falcon, and then you get to go onto the ship. It's funny. It's witty. The, le the levels are so well designed. The graphics are so sharp and crisp and clean. I was blown away. Honestly, I was really impressed by it. Like, the last LEGO game I played was, like, LEGO Batman. So, no, I played LEGO Jurassic World. But this was even more well done than that by a long shot. 
Let's build a zoo. Another absolutely awesome game. Great. It, it's, it's a zoo building game. It's like the old zoo tycoon. It is not the new zoo tycoon. It is the old 16 bit kind of zoo tycoon with the overhead view and the pixel art. It's sharp. It's clean. It works exactly as you would expect it to. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. And it's got like a $5 or $6 expansion that lets you uh, raise dinosaurs if that's what you're into. So both of these games. Nope. Life is Strange True Colors, incredible, but for someone else. Um, the Life is Strange games never really compelled me, never really, never really uh, did it for me. Uh, I kind of have been out of those kind of games ever since I played like the old Walking Deads. That's when I was really into those, and I'm kind of just out of it now. It just didn't, it, this, this thing though is like the world was so detailed, so well done. Every character you can talk to and interact with and have a great time with that kind of game. I really, really, really like, but it's got to be in a world that I want to explore. Um, me having some weird like psychic ability and exploring some like fringe town like in Alaska or wherever it is. I just didn't get me. I liked it, though. I liked it very well done, but just didn't get me. Lightning Returns. Jesus Christ, just don't waste your time on it. Just don't waste your time on it. It's the sequel, which it's hard to tell because there's nothing that really indicates that it is the sequel. Even in the beginning of the game, there's nothing to indicate. There's not like a previously on or, you know, a recap of what happened in the other game. It just throws you in and it's like, hey, have fun. The graphics were shockingly good for 360 graphics honestly you know what we're gonna put it up um we're gonna put it up a meh i'll upgrade it um it would be worth your gigs to go back and see how good 360 games hold up again promoting my idea that we have been playing the same games for 20 oh no like 15 years 16 years we've been playing the same games for like 15 or 16 years literally the same games I don't know how people don't understand this and don't like see it. And playing all the games on Game Pass all year has just brought it to glaring light because a lot of these were older games and a lot of the Game Pass games I've explored in the past were older games. You're not playing anything new. You're not like you are literally playing the same games over. And As an example, Assassin's Creed Origins. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, where's, uh, where's that one? That's, uh, down here. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Assassin's Creed Origins, and Phoenix Rising, which was up here, Immortals Phoenix Rising. They're all the same game. They're literally the same game. The only difference is this one's in third person and has a medieval, or has a, a grease tone to it. Like, if this was first person and you had a gun, it would literally be the same game with just different enemies. But the structure of the game is the same. That's why this one's up here. I've not really played games like this. So it got bumped up. But you know what? The next game that comes out that's even similar to this at all, I'm not going to be interested in because I've already played it. People don't make new gameplay loops. They don't make new anything. It is literally the same game recycled over and over and over again and it's and i just don't understand how people don't, don't don't care like i get it if like you have one game that's like oh this is my kind of game and that all i want to play is this one game so give me this one game and a bunch of different settings and stories and characters i get that but that's literally all pretty much every game is at all and you know when a game isn't that because it explodes with people loving it. As an example, Vampire Survivors. No one's made a game like that before. It became a cult phenomenon. And now there's a billion games like it. Um, granted, there was there is like a uh, like a free to play game that you can like download from like itch.io that is like Vampire Survivors before Vampire Survivors. 
that no one ever really talked about or played. Like, I don't want to take credit away from that. There were games that came along like that before. But sometimes it takes one to, like, hook on. And don't mean to, you know, take away the credit from the games who did it first. But, like, my point is, like, when something pops onto the scene that's different, Among Us, not the first social deduction game, but when it exploded onto the scene and people realized, oh, there's actually different gameplay types out there that are fun that are not the things that we normally do, it blew up and now there's a million games like it. Evil, as an example. So it's one of those things where, like Halo 2, Halo 2 became a huge multiplayer shooter, and guess what? Almost every game is very similar to how Halo 2 was set up online. It's all the same stuff. Like, come up with some new ideas, please. Little Witch in the Woods. You know what? I'm going to put it on absolutely awesome. I actually had a really good time with Little Witch in the Woods. It's fun. You're, you are a little witch in the woods and you're going around and collecting potion ingredients and spell things and exploring and kind of like a top down Metroidvania esque kind of thing with some RPG elements. Um, it was cool. It was a little bit different. Um, I wouldn't say I played it enough to know for sure that it's absolutely awesome, but I also wouldn't say it's short of greatness It was very polished, very smooth camera. I'm big on that. Loot River. I thought Loot River was amazing. It's underrated. The biggest complaint I saw people have with Loot River is they're like, oh, it's really hard to parry or or know when to like uh, dodge or block or whatever. And it's like. okay, but. You you do it when the weapon Hits you like everyone has like a little timing that you like kind of work on and you figure out how to parry each enemy. And it was incredible because people were playing this who played Dark Souls and spend all the time in the world learning how to fight an enemy. And then we're flummoxed having to fight enemies in this game. I didn't understand it. And then eventually I did understand it. Uh, 90% of Dark Souls players uh, walk up to the enemies and then run in a circle around them until they try to attack them, uh, and then they backstab them. And that is what Dark Souls is. Uh, or it, And there's no, like, um, I don't think there's any iframes on your dodge roll in this game. So it's very, uh, there might be, don't quote me, um, but it's very parry heavy, and I don't think you can dodge through enemies either. But your parry is, like, insanely powerful, and it's got a generous parry timer, that you control, you can expand the parry timer. So, I don't know. It, 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 it was one of those things where like, people were like, oh, this is hard. It's bad. I don't, I don't get it. And other hard games are good, but this game wasn't even that hard. It really wasn't. Like I beat the whole game. I'm not the greatest gamer. And I I had no problem like beating the whole game, like literally none. I actually, once I got through a couple of runs, I don't think I even died anymore. I was unkillable. Lost in random. I don't know why people don't talk about this game. Maybe it wears itself out by the end, but this game was so pretty and so cool looking and so stylized and... It's another one of those games where it's kind of like the, you know, third person. You're running through areas and you're doing the same normal third person stuff. um, Just in a different uh, environment with different stories and stuff like that. I don't play a ton of third person games, so it really compelled me. I thought it was really neat. It's not as good as Psychonauts, but it was cool. Does Psychonauts 2 come out this year? I don't think so. I think it was last year. Okay. Madden 22. Honestly, um, I mean, this should say publishers don't care, but that's where I'm going to put it. Um, the developers might care. They might not be allowed to care. But this game has so many flaws that it just, if you played Madden, the only thing that's different is the updated roster. That's it. That's all you're playing it for. Like, do something new with your game, dude. Do, like, Football Manager um, 2023 or whatever and make a better game. 
Like, do like FIFA. Just like, don't make your game so crappy. But, you know, football fans just keep buying it. Stop. I was going to buy Madden 23 this year because I've really been enjoying football. But then it, uh, it was rated terribly. They made no improvements. They did no nothing. Guardians of the Galaxy. So good. It is so good. It, there are so many franchises and shows and worlds that I love so much that I really wish got the treatment that this game got. There was an absurd level of love put into this game. If you are a fan of Guardians of the Galaxy or Marvel or superheroes, this game is literally like living in their world with their stories as their characters. Like it is that good. It is it's incredible. Your characters are talking to each other constantly. You're making choices. You're getting involved in like the quips and the dialogue. You get to explore freely in certain areas of like your ship and your home and stuff like that. And it is so full of Easter eggs and little nods to other Marvel things and nods to the Guardians of the Galaxy and the comic books and the movies. And it is if you are a Marvel fan, this game, if you're if you're especially if you're a big Marvel fan, this game should be at the top of list of games that you want to even if you don't play games, you should play this game. The combat is not the greatest, but everything else is is top tier. Mass Effect Legendary Edition. If you've never played Mass Effect and you can get over some of the uh, rough edges in the first game, because it's just a remaster of the first game. If you can get past some of the rough edges, I mean, it might be the greatest trilogy of games ever created. Because they all lead one into the next, into the next. And then it has literally the worst ending. <laughs> the endings is, I don't remember if they fixed it for this version or not, but like in the original game, the true ending was locked behind you playing like 200 hours of the online multiplayer that everyone hated. Hopefully they have that fixed in this one. But anyway, the, the games and the way that they link together and everything, I thought it was the future of gaming. I thought every RPG forever was going to start doing stuff like this. Uh, and uh, they didn't. Uh, they do have it a little bit in some games. I think Wasteland 2 to Wasteland 3 has a little bit of that. Um, and there's something else where your choices carry over, but it's not jumping to the top of my mind. Anyway, I thought that was the future of video games. Was like these big, complex, incredible stories that you have all the control over. It wasn't. Um, match point tennis. Uh, my God, it's freaking tennis. Who cares? All right. Medieval Dynasty. I'm putting this in frame rate hell. I'm not going to say that the developers don't care enough. I'm pretty sure this is done by an indie studio. But even in performance mode, I cannot get a consistent, even with VRR in performance mode, I cannot get a consistent frame rate out of this game for the life of me. And I, I don't want to play it because of that. Like, it literally, it's it's so jumpy that like I just like it it it's it causes me to suffer. Um fix your game. Like make it run better. Please make it run better. Um Metal Hellsinger. Uh I'm gonna say it was incredible, but for someone else. I had nothing but issues with this. So I get my audio through a sound bar, which I don't know if you can see, is right here. Um, so there is like a slight delay, which really doesn't matter in most games or most of the time. And it's something I really don't even notice, but in a beat based game being off by like a hundred milliseconds <clears throat> is a, a nightmare. It's a nightmare. I'm going to say a flight simulator is a must play. You don't got to beat the game, download it. It's going to take you forever. And then you're going to have to do a huge updates. And then after that, you are going to have to uh, do jump through a bunch of. It feels like a, you're jumping through a bunch of hoops to play. But my God, 
being able to go and fly over like your hometown or fly near natural disasters and stuff like that is so cool. Like it is, it is literally unlike anything else in gaming. It's awesome. Midnight Fight, Fight Express, meh. The, honestly, you know, I said Lappin is the only game I didn't remember. I don't really remember Midnight uh, Fight Express that much either. Uh, it was okay. Uh, Minecraft preview. Uh, I thought this was incredible, but for because it's Minecraft, but it's for someone else. I don't need to preview what's coming in Minecraft and have the unstable builds so that like then my worlds get removed. I don't care. Uh, MLB The Show 22. I'm going to say this was incredible, but for someone else. The amount of accessibility this game had when you first get into it, where it's like, hey, do you know anything about baseball? Have you ever played baseball? Well, here, these are all the things that we can do to help you. And these are all the cool control setups. And these are all the interesting ways that we can help get you into the game and then ease you into the more complex stuff. Awesome. Moon Scars, something short of greatness. 2D, Souls-like, kind of Metroidvania-esque. You're going, you're fighting. It just, it just didn't quite click for me in the right way. Now, I thought this game was MotoGP, but I think this game is MotoGP. Whatever. I mean, they both can be meh, like, honestly. Um, because it, I didn't have fun playing a single motorcycle game this year. So my friend Pe Peppa Pig is absolutely incredible for your child. If your child loves Peppa Pig, download that game. They're in the, they're just in the world of Peppa Pig. They can go hang out for a few hours. She like guides, they get to make their own character. She guides you around. She's like, Hey, this is fun. Naraka blade point. Honestly, I'm going to say this was also a really cool battle royale kind of game where it's like a pvpve and you like level up out on the battlefield and you get cool moves and it's flashy and just wasn't for me nba 20 2k22 uh basketball sucks don't waste your downloads uh, i remember getting fouled over and over and over again because i i stood in front of someone doing this you can't do that stop that foul it was stupid. NHL 2022. I'll say that was incredible. I'm going to say it's something short of greatness. Uh, it didn't quite jump off the page at me, but I love throwing down with fist fights. You know what? I'm going to say it was. I had a good time playing this. Uh, I got pretty into it. I put it on like the old school controls, ran through it like that. Had a great time. Nino Cooney, Wrath of the White Witch. Absolutely awesome. If you like uh, Studio Ghibli, I mean, just play the game. It's a, it's an entire Studio Ghibli adventure, essentially. Um, I'm, I don't know a better way to describe it. If you don't know Studio Ghibli, it's an it's a Japanese RPG that is is beautiful. It's beautiful. The Ninja Gaiden Collection. I'm gonna say this was incredible, but not for me. Um. It's all of the Sigma games, so it's like the PS3 versions or something like that. All the originals, like the Xbox versions, were like deleted or lost forever, um, which sucks, but, you know, someone's going to love it. Nobody saves the world. I'm going to say this was absolutely awesome. I had a lot of fun with this game. It's not breaking the mold. It's not doing anything incredible or... Or like super crazy, but you do get a lot of like cool abilities, cool creatures you get to turn into and then level up. And it's got online co-op that I got to play with my son, so freaking loved it. Norco, you know what? Another absolutely awesome game. Point and click adventure in a Louisiana bayou that is like... Um trippy? I, I thought I explained it. It's like it's like you are descending into madness while you are playing. It's like everything looks normal on the surface. And then as you poke and prod, um, everything becomes insane. Olia, this was such a good game. Never heard anybody talk about it. Don't understand why. Olia was is like a 2D. Maybe it's a Metroidvania. Maybe, but you're like building up a city and you're going on these adventures for like your city people and you're bringing them like health items and you're doing things like that. The art style and the gameplay 
were so good. Like when you hit someone with your sword, it felt incredible. Like you were absolutely obliterating them and it was awesome. Really well done game. I don't know why I've never heard anyone talk about it. I thought it was amazing. Um, Omori, another absolutely awesome horror game that was weird and trippy. And it's like not what you expect at every turn. You're like in school and then you're like in a magical land where you're fighting monsters and then you're in a horror movie and then it's weird. It was really cool. Opus Echoes of Star Song. I'm going to say this was something short of greatness. It started off real strong. It seemed to have a very compelling premise, but like thinking back on it, I cannot remember any amount of gameplay. Like genuinely, I just remember walking and then talking for maybe an hour. Outer Wilds. Uh, I'm going to put this one. God. I'm going to put this in absolutely awesome. But I didn't get to experience the absolutely awesome. The game seemed absolutely awesome and seemed so cool and so compelling. But when it was added, there was no XNS update. They gave the XNS update in like November or something like that. And then the game left in December. So there was a very short amount of time to enjoy this game at 60 frames per second. And I unfortunately was busy and I didn't get to play it. So I almost don't want to put it in absolutely awesome. I want to put it in developers don't care enough. You know what? I am going to put it in developers don't care enough. You know why? Because their game was on Game Pass all year long. And they chose to wait to update it until the end, until it was essentially off of there. And it makes me feel like either they didn't care or they were waiting. So that way people who wanted to play it at six frames per second would have to buy it. Um, I'm not buying the game, so that's just kind of where we're at on that one. Pac-Man Museum. My God, this is like the Pac-Man hell. If Pac-Man went to hell, this is where he would go. He is literally in a Pac-Man arcade with nothing but Pac-Man games surrounded by a black void in a little room. It is literally Pac-Man hell. It's kind of dark. Paradise Killer. I'm going to put this as a must play. This game is like Danganronpa, where it is a murder, an evolving murder mystery that is continuing, but you get to choose where you go and who you talk to. You do the actual investigation. You do. You start the trial and you can accuse and convict the wrong person. I think that's incredibly compelling and interesting. The story and the world are very weird. Uh, it may not be the perfect game, but if you like Trigger Happy Havoc, uh, you got to try it. It is worth a try. Paw Patrol Grand Prix. Uh, I don't know if it's actually incredible, but for someone else, but it's not for me. Uh, it's for a kid. And if you have a kid that likes Paw Patrol, I cannot imagine they would be upset about that. Same thing with Adventure City Calls. It seemed pretty okay, but like you can't put that much into a kid's game because it's going to be played by three-year-olds. So it needs to be accessible to three-year-olds. So it's cool for someone. I'm going to put Pentiment in Incredible, but for someone else. It's another one of those games where I got I would have to be in the mood for a very... I don't know if it's serious, but for like a very story based choice driven investigative game that you're going to be like diving deep into the world. Persona five, I'm going to put on absolutely awesome, but I kind of want to put on developers don't care enough because I feel like people are going to look at the Persona five release and they're going to be like, man, this game really did not sell well on Xbox. Yeah, because everyone who's wanted to play Persona 5, who's a diehard Persona 5 fan, were forced to buy a PlayStation 4 to play Persona 5. It is the whole reason I bought a PlayStation 4. It's the only reason I had a PlayStation 4 last generation was because of Persona 5. That's it. That was the one reason I bought Persona uh, by, bought a PS4 was to play Persona 5. And now that it's and I played it twice 
all the way through, and then I played it halfway through one other time. I don't want to play it again. I just don't. I've put 500 hours into Persona 5. I don't want to play it again, even if it is to show my support, like, hey, I desperately want Persona 6 to be on Xbox, because if it is, that's where I want to play it. Uh, I will not be buying a PS5 or whatever to play the next Persona game. I will not. I, I have no interest. I, I don't have the, the money. I happen to have the money last time, but you know, Game Pass is such a good deal. Like I cannot go back to PlayStation. Um, I have gotten to play more games this year than I got to play in the entire time I owned a PS4. Um, and I played better games this year than I played the entire time I played on PS4, except for Persona 5. But there are games that are in my wheelhouse of competitive interest to Persona 5, where like if I would have had Paradise Killer and Persona 5 and Danganronpa all at the same time, I don't know if Persona 5 would have been the one I would have played. If I would have had Paradise Killer around the time I had Danganronpa right after that, and I had not played Danganronpa 2 and then had years go by where I've kind of gotten into other stuff, Paradise Killer might have been one of my favorite games of all time. Timing is a lot of stuff. Phantom Abyss, absolutely awesome. You're Indiana Jones. You're going through procedurally generated uh, dungeons. And if you beat the dungeon first, well, your name's on it forever. It's really neat. It's really interesting. It's not explained well in the game. It's very convoluted in the game. Potion Craft, totally chill alchemist simulator. You're moving around on a cool little map. You're picking herbs and you're selling potions to people. It's chill, it's fun, it's relaxing, it's pretty. Power Wash Simulator. Online co-op with my son. We cleaned a lot of stuff. This game's cool. Moving around ladders, climbing up on buildings, hosing things off, trying all the different nozzles and unlocking everything. It was really neat. Uh, it it can hurt your fingers. Um, I, got, I got arthritis uh, in my fingers. And... Uh, it, it will hurt your fingers after a while if you're not careful. Proteus, another game that I'm going to say was incredible, but for someone else. This is a boomer shooter with insanely cool graphics. If you're into like Doom, Quake, that kind of thing. Those really aren't my kind of games, but the, God, the graphics were incredible. Paparazzi. My God. Um, I'm going to put this at meh. I'm sure that someone that this is like the game that they've always wanted. You're going around and taking pictures of dogs and giving them treats and stuff. It was okay. Uh, Rainbow Billy. I'm going to put incredible for someone else. Um, Rainbow Billy and the Curse of the Leviathan. It kind of seems like a kid's game. It kind of seems like it's an adult game. It kind of seems like it's about really serious subject matter. And it kind of seems like it's not. I'm not totally sure how to read into Rainbow Billy, but it's very pretty. It plays super well. It has an incredibly smooth camera. Um, and it might be about depression. I'm not sure. Rainbow Six Extraction. Uh, I'm just going to say don't waste your gigs. Like, who cares? I couldn't even get into a game. I tried over and over and over and it like literally just could not connect. Um, and I never cared enough to go back and try again. That is literally the most I needed to play was about an hour sitting there trying to get into a game. Couldn't get it. Deleted it. Never looked back. Perfectly happy about it. Um, people tell me Rainbow Six Siege is good. So, I mean, I'll put it on here at incredible, but for someone else, but like, dude, that's like, you got to research that game to play it like you better be watching people play it if you want to play it because literally my first time playing uh we went into a room and then we barricaded ourselves in the room away from the objective and then we had to break ourselves out of the room that was my experience research and destroy i thought this was awesome it might be something short of greatness but you know what it hits it hit home with me it's like scooby-doo mixed with XCOM. Scooby-Doo mixed with XCOM. Monkey Island. Uh, I'm going to put it in absolutely awesome. 
I had some fun with it, and it could be really cool. I don't know if the game holds up from beginning to end. I'm a little worried about it. I loved the original Monkey Island. Um, but these games, depending on how the puzzles go and depending on how the dialogue and stuff goes, can really fall off a cliff. So I'm going to put that one there, but with an asterisk. Road 96, my God, it is in third. It is in frame rate hell. I have a lot of frame rate issues in this game, but God, this game was good. You are out on the road and you go to like random places, essentially, as you try to explore your way through and sneak out of a country that is, I forget what they're doing to kids. I don't remember if they're killing them or if they are um, forcing them into war service or I forget what they're doing, but they're treating kids poorly or making them slaves. I don't remember, but you are trying to escape the country and you go through these, you go on this road trip through these weird places and... Like I was on like a game show where I was being held at gunpoint and sneaking through the mountains and like finding like where kids died. And it's real weird. It's real good. Um, it is not like a lot of other games you play. Uh, it's a little bit of Firewatch mixed with. Um, I don't even know what Firewatch mixed with something. Scorn. Play this game. This I don't I don't know why people were so down on Scorn when it came out. Like it's another one of those games that didn't get rated amazingly. I played it from beginning to end. I really liked Scorn. I had a really good time. That game messed with me. Like I was pretty sure by the end of the game that I was a villain. Um but I don't know. I don't want to say any more cuz I don't want to give away the end of the game, but Dude, this game sticks with you, and it is gross, and it is pretty, and it is different. It's very different, uh, and that's why I liked it. Um, people seem to have problems with it. I don't know, uh, like, with the combat, like, they had trouble fighting things or killing enemies and stuff like that. Like, I got killed by, like, I had trouble with maybe, like, my first two enemies, and then it gets pretty straightforward on how you fight. Like, it's not that crazy. Um, I don't know. It's another one of those things like Loot River where it was a really awesome game where it's like people who are normally like, I love hard games are like, I can't figure out how to parry these three different enemies. It's literally impossible. There's one enemy who attacks one way and another enemy who attacks another way. How can I figure that out? I don't know. Play a freaking game. It's. It is further proof that people only want to play the same game over and over and over again. And that's why the same games sell all the time over and over and over again, because people are so familiar with it that that's I think that's what a lot of people want. They just want to jump into a game and turn off their brain. They don't want to learn new games. They don't want to learn new things about games or explore or um you know really dive into the things they just want to be like you know what i want horizon forbidden west to be literally horizon uh, but with better graphics that's all they want out of the game like they don't want it to be different or interesting or come up with new gameplay ideas or anything like that they want literally the same game just with better graphics it's like i already played that game i don't care if it has better graphics you could do things to increase the graphics of the first game and it would be the same game. I just. Uh, Shadowrun Trilogy. Absolutely amazing. Uh, they are mobile games. Uh, and you can tell when you're playing them. But they're really good. Just good, solid RPGs in a futuristic fantasy sci-fi world that appeals to me personally. Thus, it gets an absolutely amazing. If I didn't like the area, it would probably be in. Something short of greatness. Shredders. I'm going to throw you in the meh category. Uh, you had some potential. You had some funny and weird stuff. Uh, a lot of gameplay. Like, I had, like, bugs uh, that I had issues with and stuff like that. Signalis. Man, I'm going to put it in something short of greatness. Quite frankly, it might be a great game, but I got real frustrated at the beginning. Uh, and I got real angry and I quit playing it. So, you know, this is a big asterisk here. This game actually might be really awesome because it's in my 
games I want to go back and finish and play and explore more of, which is where a lot of my absolutely awesome games are. They're games that I want to go back and play and explore more of, but um, I got so frustrated with it. I'm not sure that that's what I want to do. Skull the Hero Slayer, something short of greatness. It's just missing something. It's really cool. It's really hard. Roguelite 2D. It's missing something. Slime Rancher 2. Missing something. Again. If you played Slime Rancher 1, guess what? You've played Slime Rancher 2. It's got better graphics and a, a few more slimes. And that's it's the same game. Drives me nuts. Quit making the same game over and over. I'm a little more forgiving. It's an indie studio. It gives them a chance to really polish it, get a nice big release and maybe propel their studio forward. It's a little different for them, but my God, so sick of playing the same game over and over and over sniper elite five. I can tell you exactly why this is short of greatness. Enemies spawn forever. I want to get on a map with my sniper rifle and my awesomeness. And I want to go and I want to kill every single person on the map and I want to explore everywhere and I want to do it. I want the, I don't want to kill everybody on the map, but I want to have the ability to kill everyone on the map. But in this game, if you get into a big fight and you kill off a whole platoon of guys, guess what you're going to see rolling up the hill, two trucks full of dudes, along with a car full of dudes and a bunch of dudes running on the road. And it's like, just let me kill all the guys here. If you send more guys, I want them to come from another base. So when I eventually get to that base, they have less people because all the people came to back up these guys. Like, make it more of a sandbox environment that's more realistic and not just an endless flood of enemies and you're just sneaking around and trying to kill a couple of big people. Whatever. Soccer story seemed great. Is not for me. Soccer based RPG where some like flying island dude is like, you can't play soccer anymore. Just didn't grab me. Solasta, Crown of the Magister, based off of Dungeons and Dragons 5e rule set, top down turn based RPG. Very good. Very, very good. Classes, totally unbalanced. Totally unbalanced, but very good. Soma. Uh, Soma seemed cool. Uh, I mean, but it wasn't, it wasn't super memorable. I'm going to put it in meh, Fistopheles. This one, this is the one picture that is like really hard to tell what it is. This is, oh no. It's, I know the game It's the one it's made by the dude, the people who made inside. I'm putting it right next to inside. It is Somerville. It's Somerville where like the aliens come down and you like turn into alien Jesus. I mean, it's, it's about as compelling as inside is, except it came out this year and inside, uh, came out 10 years ago or more. And thus inside helped in high regard. Uh, this game did not hit very pretty though. Space lines from the far out. Awesome game. Awesome game. It is like uh, Overcooked, but you're running a spaceship. And it's not as aggravating as Overcooked is. It's more reasonable. And you get cool um, roguelite upgrades. Where you literally get to upgrade your ship and buy new ships as you're flying around and running missions. And you get to choose the missions you run and stuff. It is so cool. Um, I'm going to... I literally went on for so long. I'm going to have to uh, choose a, a different video here. That's my bad. That's my bad. Okay. Have a little bit more background. Um, this one is, uh, this is, this is, uh, this is the potion game. Another game I, I push and craft had a lot of fun with. Um, don't remember what I was talking about. We're done with it. Spelunky two. I'm going to put it in incredible, but for someone else, because people tell me it's good. I don't think it's a good game. <laughs> I did not like it. Um, it does not appeal to me. That's it. That's all I have to say. 2D roguelike. Uh, it sounds like it would appeal to me, but it is uh, the reason it doesn't appeal to me. I can tell you exactly why it doesn't appeal to me. It's on a timer. You are encouraged to go as fast as possible at all times, and you are punished if you go slow. 
I like taking my time in games. I like exploring. That's what makes the games fun for me. So it literally takes away everything that makes that kind of game fun for me. Uh, so I guess it can be incredible, but for someone who likes that kind of stuff. Spider hack is absolutely amazing. Uh, you are spiders who fight with crazy weapons and you can fight each other or you guys can work together and fight wave based enemies. It's a lot of fun. I spent a lot of time playing it with my son. He really loves the game. It's really cool. Super Mega Baseball 3. Incredible, but for someone else, honestly, arguably, might be easier to get into than MLB The Show, and honestly, might have more options and more variety and more gameplay than MLB The Show. But I, I, I played MLB The Show after Super Mega Baseball 3, and I found MLB The Show to be very compelling with how introductive it was. So uh, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about it. But anyway, I thought both games were very good. This game was maybe a little more cheeky, a little more fun. Taikono Tatsujin, the drum master. Another rhythm based game. Incredible. But for someone else, you can actually buy a drum to play it with. I didn't. Tainted Grail Conquest. Absolutely awesome. Roguelite deck builder combat game where you're going through you can unlock characters you unlock abilities weapons and stuff like that and you're going through and fighting things and going to bosses and you kind of get to explore around it's got some cool mechanics it's got like a like you're exploring like a city at the same time it's really neat i really thought it was cool um i it was an early access too so i hope that they add more to it <laughs> Telling lies. Uh, I'm going to put this as incredible, but for someone else. Again, you got someone who's into criminal minds. This one is like a spy thriller. Almost like where it's there's like an undercover agent. But can you trust the undercover agent? And like, are the bad guys really the bad guys? Or are the good guys actually the bad guys? And stuff like that. Very interesting. Very different. And you have to like figure out which character you are. <clears throat> Very interesting. The Anacrusis. I'm going to put it in frame rate hell. That's where it was. Um, the gameplay was just not smooth enough when I played it to really jump out at me. I'm assuming they went ahead and launched on Game Pass because it probably netted them some money. That would let them continue working on their game. I think they released it too soon. I don't think it was stable enough. I don't think it had enough variety in it yet. And I think they're going to keep adding to the game and it will eventually be forgotten, unfortunately, uh, simply because it launched in a state that was difficult to play. Uh, I have come to notice that if your game is in early access, unless you make colossal colossal efforts to fix your game and get players back playing it your game if it doesn't strike right away is probably doomed for death unless you have like a game where it's like it's real tough when you're playing an online multiplayer game that requires other people the ai in this game is dreadful you're not getting through the level with the ai it is abysmal so I really am pulling for the developer of this because they are an indie developer who clearly have a cool style and vision. But I don't think this game is. I hope it generates a profit, I guess, is what I'm getting at. The Dungeons of Nahulbek. This game was awesome. I'm going to put this as a must play because I think more people should play it. It is a turn based top down RPG, very similar to Solasta. But while Solasta is a more traditional, and the reason that Solasta is on absolutely amazing, awesome, when it really doesn't do anything out of the ordinary for me, is one, these kinds of games are not on console a lot. And two, it has the Dungeons and Dragons 5e rule set, which I am a huge fan of. Uh, and it makes the complex systems in the game really simple and easy for me to understand. The Dungeons of Nahubik is another top down turn based combat RPG, but it is a comedy game and it is actually funny um i can't stress enough how hard it is to be funny in a video game this game is actually funny you should play it 
The Last Kids on Earth, I thought was really good for someone who would be a fan of The Last Kids on Earth. Or if you had a younger kid who was just getting into like a Diablo style game, I think this could be right up someone's alley. I don't. I'm going to put it in something short of greatness. All right. It's definitely for someone else. It's definitely for kids, but I think it needs a little bit more love. It would, it would really would have helped if it had some voice acting. Um, I think it had maybe a tiny bit, but not enough. It needed more. Make me more feel like I'm in the world. Like I want my characters to talk when I'm using abilities and stuff like that. But the gameplay was solid. The Legend of Tian Ding, another absolutely awesome game that no one is talking about. Super stylish, super cool, super beautiful um, with awesome combat. Uh, again, if I'm not mistaken, another Metroidvania kind of game with just a different style and look to it that I thought was really neat. It was really well, it was real sharp, real well done. The Pedestrian awesome honestly it kind of some of these games i kind of want to drop down to the uh something short of greatness category because i do feel like these games might not be uh you know now that i'm like talking about tnd and it's like oh it's another metroidvania with cool graphics but uh i will leave it up there because i think it deserves the love the pedestrian i'm really tempted to put it as a must play the pedestrian was so cool it's like a puzzle exploration game where you're a little 2D guy moving from place to place with incredible music and just awesome, like just an awesome atmosphere and environment. And honestly, I think it's better than a lot. You know what? I'm putting it as a must play. It's better than a lot of these games. The Sims 4. I mean, it's The Sims. Like, you can't go wrong if you like The Sims. It's not for me. The Walking Dead. The final season. How long have they been making these games? I know that they just brought the studio back. You Literally within 30 minutes of playing the game, it forces me to just make dumb decisions. Like, there's no good, smart decision. And it's like something where... A character like it's like literally in the beginning, like, oh, you have to do this the stupid way or you're going to make the kid that's with you evil. And it's like, I don't want the kid to be evil. I want him to know and do what's right. But at the same time, killing zombies ain't evil. We got to survive. Why would you put yourself at risk for no reason? This war of mine, final cut. You know what? I was really into this. And had I not played this game yesterday. This would have been on absolutely awesome. I am going to put this down here on meh. Because the controls are cumbersome and aggravating and annoying. Like there's in the in the computer version, as I remember it, it's been a while. You can click on a character and be like, oh, go make food. Click on another character. Oh, go down to the uh, workshop. We'll work on that in a second. Other character, go to bed. And then you can go and then click on the guy at the workshop and do some workshop stuff and kind of like jump around and do things like that. You can't do that on the console version. You have to select the character, run them all the way down to the workshop, start what they're doing. Go select another character, manually run them down all the ladders, up the stairs, run them to the kitchen. Take the other one, run them all the way to the bed. Hey, the food's done. You can't just click on a guy and be like, hey, go eat. You have to select him, run him all the way up the stairs, run him to the kitchen, have him eat the food, run him all the way back to what he was doing. Like, who thought that was a good design? Like, it's it's just boring. Get your crap together. Uh, I Actually, I might drop that down to uh, developers don't care. Tinykins. That's awesome. It's really, really cool. You are in a super beautiful art-styled world, doing compelling, interesting, fascinating things, meeting cool, interesting characters, and finding these little nooks of this world that are just special. This game was really, really, really good. Um, honestly, you know what? You can go into the must-play. Honestly, I think it's a must-play. Team U Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Solid Solid 2D beat em up with Ninja Turtles. They don't do anything to break the mold, but my God, if you like 2D beat em up, if you like the old 2D beat em up Ninja Turtles 
and those are some of the games I grew up on. On the old Nintendo, I had the one where they're like busting through the the wall with the skateboards uh, on the front of the Nintendo cartridge, and then you start in the burning building, and you got to go save April, and then she gets kidnapped at the last second. Loved that game. The, like I think it's the like second or third level. You're like in the sewers, and you're fighting the little robots, and you're on surfboards, and game is so good and very hard. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. Um. I'm going to put it in meh because it's not bad, but it's really not good. It is like if you were like, hey, go back to the bare bones blueprint of what all these open world games are nowadays. It's this game. This game is the one that, that put us in this hell where every single open world game is the same. All the Far Cries, all the Assassin's Creed's, all the Immortal Phoenix Risings, all the Horizon Zero Dawns, all the... Um, uh, Days Gone's and like all those games. This game is the reason we have to suffer through the same gameplay in every game. Thank you for ruining gaming for us. Torment Tides of Numenara. I'm going to put this at incredible, but for someone else, it's another one of those games. It is like a top down old school Baldur's Gate kind of thing. Where, but it's like futuristic and you're like time traveling and like going through parallel universes and it's really neat. But it's one of those things you kind of got to be in the mood for it. Like, you know, you're not just going to jump in the Wasteland 3 because someone said it's good. You're like, oh, I really need to be in this like 80 hour mode of like serious RPG. <laughs> Um, and I don't think it elevates itself so far above that from what I played to, you know, what? I almost want to put it in absolutely awesome because I put so many other things up here, but I'm going to leave it on incredible, which is the this. These are the same rank. Absolutely awesome and incredible for, for someone else are the same rank. You could flip these around and be like, everything down here is absolutely awesome. And everything up here is for someone else. If that's how you felt. So e all of these games and both of these categories, I think are absolutely awesome. Not necessarily for me, but absolutely awesome. Train Sim World 3. My God, awesome for someone else. Dude, I spent maybe 25, 30 minutes trying to figure out how to start. Can I please just like go in there? No. Trying to figure out how to start the train. Dude, I got like sirens and buzzers going off and all this ridiculous stuff going on. I'm stuck in the bus depot. God, frickin' passengers are angry. The the frickin' intercoms like, get out of here. But I was stuck. Someone's gonna love it though. Trick to Yomi, underrated. Um, I almost want to put it in. You know what? I'm gonna put it in absolutely awesome. The art style in this game, like, dude, it's like being in a movie. Does the is the game awesome from you know what I'm gonna put it in something short of greatness. It felt like it needed a little something extra in the combat department to really be elevated to the next level. But everything else about this game from the story to the style. Freaking chef's kiss. Tunic. You got to go play it. Tunic is one of the best top down Zelda esque games ever. It is I don't say this lightly. It is better than any top down Zelda game that's ever been made. It is better genuinely without exaggeration. And I've played a billion of them. I might have played all of them. When's the last time they even released one? Dude, I was even playing the freaking story of seasons or whatever it is on the Game Boy. Uh, or like the, the, the Legend of Zelda, like Autumn, whatever. The one where there's like two of them and uh, whatever. This is better than every top-down Zelda game. It is. Straight up, it is better. It is a more compelling world. It is more compelling enemies. It is more compelling exploration. It actually has exploration. In Zelda, you're not really exploring. You're like, oh, I didn't go this way. Let's go over here. Hey, I found a chest. In Tunic, it's like, oh, you know, it's weird. I feel like I've been seeing these little lights everywhere and there's this bell i can ring and that's interesting and then you can figure out how the light and the bells are attached to each other and unlock a totally optional area but it's not in like a way where like you walk into a room and you're like oh 
here's a puzzle. It's like, no, I'm noticing something weird here. It feels like there could be something here. And if you poke and prod long enough, you might find it. The developer even came out and said there are still secrets in the game that people have not found. And they're not like super hidden secrets. It's not like you're going up and smacking invisible walls like Dark Souls. And I hate that, by the way. I hate invisible walls. Um, which they're not invisible walls. They're visible walls um, that are not real. Uh, they're immaterial walls. Um, I hate them. I think they're stupid. And I think it's like one of the dumbest game designs ever. Why would you tell you, you know what's fun for my player? Having them go around and smack literally every single wall. Yeah, I could see how it would be fun if you were fighting an enemy and you accidentally smacked the wall or they smacked the wall and it disappeared. And Ooh, there's something back there. That's neat. But like, come up with a better way to hide your secrets. Like, don't make me like go around and smack every wall. Do something like Tunic. Where it's like, oh, I can interact with this weird thing, but it doesn't do anything. That's strange. Most people are going to walk away. But to the diligent person who's like, I got to figure out what this does. They can expand upon the world and they can they can organically find a puzzle and a secret instead of it being like. There's 27 hidden walls in this game. Go around and hit every single wall everywhere for the next 40 hours until you find them all. Or better yet, go and look up every secret online in our game ever and don't actually do anything yourself. Like, give me a game that makes me want to explore and do things on our own. By the way, you know the other game that did that really well? High on Life. High on Life and Tunic were probably the two games this year that set up gameplay in a way where it naturally and organically compelled you to try things or to explore or to think outside of the box or work outside of the lines even when it felt like the game really wanted you to go on the lines if you go outside of the lines you are rewarded with something unique and compelling those games did that in a way that no other games did this year literally step i literally think high on life and tunic were steps forward in gaming and they will never be recognized for it because they're going to be like, this is a Zelda like, and this is just a first person shooter with fart jokes and dick jokes. They are so much more, so much more. Uh, Turbo Golf Racing. I thought this game was incredible. I played it with my son for a long time. Uh, we can't play it anymore because if he is losing um, or having trouble on a map, uh, he gets very angry. <laughs> he does not like it. Uh, it's why we had to quit playing golf with your friends because it was more like uh, misery. Turnip boy commits tax evasion. I almost want to put this in absolutely awesome because I actually thought this game was funny and interesting and compelling, but I, it's, it's missing something. What's it missing? I don't know, but it's missing something. Two point campus. I'm going to put incredible, but for someone else, it is absolutely awesome. And it's really tempting for me to put it there. But if you had to tell me, like, do I want to make a college campus that's kind of fun and silly and where fun and goofy things happen? Or do I want to go and build a zoo or do I want to go and make Jurassic World? I would much rather do these two. No offense to two point campus. It was very sharp, very well done. Umarangi Generation It's definitely not amazing It is short of greatness It's one of those games where I'm like Why aren't people talking about this Like it was so Weird And it's so full of commentary On actual life and war And you're like literally A photographer Who's like no This is what life is like here And this is what we're living for in this moment Like it's just really interesting unsold something short of greatness this game and i i think it is either not recorded i recorded this game and i recorded it and uploaded it without audio i did not realize I, it was totally without audio don't know what happened i think something happened with my video editor and i just didn't check the video afterwards i check it before and then i render it out and then i upload it i don't check it again once it renders um maybe i should uh, anyway, it uploaded with no audio, and I still remember the comment I got on it, and I still feel bad about it. The guy said, hey, this was recommended to me on my home page, my home page, and I clicked on it, and it had no audio. 
this sucks. Like, and that sucks because I was on someone's homepage and they actually clicked on my video and it was a video with no audio. I apologize to them. I uh, don't know if they ever got the comment. I don't know if they ever went and watched the other video or anything else of mine. Probably not. But um, the game had maybe my coolest feeling moment of the entire year. Um, I there is there is like a very complex this game has such complex controls that like if you are not an action gamer, you are not going to reap the full rewards of what this game has to offer. This game has some of the craziest, tightest combat I've ever experienced. And there is one part where all these guys come up to attack me and there's like a way that you can do a perfect parry followed with a counter that's essentially an insta kill. And I... Parry counter, 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 like 10 dudes. And it was, it was maybe the coolest thing I've ever done in a video game. That being said, when you keep going in the game and you keep getting farther and farther and farther, it feels like it is just missing something. I don't know what that is. Wish I could. That's where I'm at. Now. I want to put Vampire Survivors in something short of greatness, but I feel like people would be upset with me. So I'm going to put it in absolutely amazing because it really was for about six to eight hours. The thing is, and it, the developer is committed to updating this game. Like, and they apparently like Game Pass because they, they specifically talked about Game Pass um, where they said, hey, Game Pass gamers, this game is going to be updated throughout the year for free, but the updates are going to come more slowly. I'm assuming because they did not have the hugest success with their DLC, which was not rated the best. Um, so they are probably thinking it's better to just expand upon the game as it is and make the game as it is more compelling and more interesting. Here's my thing. You should do that. Now, don't don't do DLC. Honestly, you should make your current DLC free and included in the game at some point. Uh, if there is a way to like change it so that stuff is just included with the game and you just got rid of the DLC completely. Um, I think at a certain point, that's what you should do or make it free. Um, and the reason I say this is because you want as many people playing this game as possible and you want them to have as much content as possible. And the reason for that is this is the kind of game that Game Pass wants forever. It doesn't matter that the game's three dollars and that anyone can buy it. This is the kind of game where when you download Game Pass and you're like, hey, what are the first 10 games I should download? Vampire Survivors is one of those games because it is a pick up and play fun game. The reason that I'm a little down on it is because once you play it for about eight to 10 hours, there's really only one way to play the game. That is you get all the upgrades and then you essentially start with one weapon and then you, you just pick out your other weapons and you pick out your buffs. But like, certain buffs are better than other ones and it's only if you use specific weapons on specific levels do you actually even take the worst buffs and that's so that you can get the advanced weapon but there's also other things that you can do where I, I don't know and it's like there's items on the level but you are discouraged from going and getting them right away because if you go and get them right away then you lose one of the spots for your items. So you're literally, you do the same thing in every level and that's you sit still until you get full on items and full on weapons. And then if you are able to move still, which you might not be able to, you might be in full survival mode at that point. Then you go out and you explore and you try to go get the other items to then upgrade those items so that you can uh, extend your power even higher. And that's you do that literally in every single level, every single time you upgrade your weapons first. You never upgrade your items first because the items don't help you as much. You want max weapons as soon as possible. You need them. 
it's 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 so like you do the same thing over and 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 it it's not like it doesn't feel like you get choices it's not like ooh, i'm gonna take this weapon because it's gonna give me an advantage at this part of the game that's gonna really let me um be able to go and explore and get the items faster or it's going to give me an advantage in doing this in this way which is going to let me maybe get experience faster or or it's going to let me do this or there's none of that it's like oh i need this because it is the most powerful weapon oh i i need to figure out a way to work in spinach because all of my having four maxed out weapons with like the special weapon unlocked and plus 50% damage is way more valuable than having five fully upgraded weapons. You might as well have your fifth upgraded weapon be at, or six, I forget how many is, uh, be at level nine and then take an extra 50% damage on all your other weapons because it just does not mathematically make sense to do it any other way. So you are forced into taking certain items in every single run because that's the only way you're ever going to get to the end or at a certain point you just quit losing and it doesn't matter what you take it's really i don't know um i think that the developer working on this because i think it's made by one person and the game is really awesome honestly it's it's probably the game that i find most i don't even throw screen put in a must play honestly i'd say anyone should play it i just said if you downloaded 10 games what should you download this is one of them um I, it needs more weapons and more items and more interesting ways to combine them um, to really take it to another level. And I think the developer can for sure do that, especially with the way that they don't seem focused on churning out content to make money. They seem focused on making content that is good at a pace that will be healthy for them, which I think will expand on their creativity. So I really, really hope to see that game get a bunch of love and especially because I think whenever your contract, whatever it is with game pass is up, they are for sure going to want to resign it. They're going to want another contract like a hundred percent. This is the kind of game that I would want to, I'd want to buy this game from the person who made it. That's what I'd want to do. I'd want to buy it and then like, and have it like buy their studio and be like, Hey, do you want, do you want to like a small team and a bunch of money? Because we like your stuff. Um, I think it's neat, but I'd want to own Vampire Survivors. I would want I would I would recommend it to every Game Pass uh player ever, even at three bucks. It it's an incredibly compelling game. It just needs a little bit more content. Okay. Watch Dogs 2. Meh. Um, I got into it. It was uh it was okay. It had some neat stuff. Meh. Weird West is missing something. I don't know. I don't know what it's missing. I don't know what it needs to take that next step for me, but it was missing something. That's why the category is something. What remains of Edith Finch? I wish I had an overrated section. I'll put it in meh. Dude, I heard so many good things about this. By the way, I forgot to play this game when it was on Game Pass. I totally missed it when I was going back through and looking at every Game Pass game that came out in the year. This was on there, and I was like, I don't remember playing this. I went and looked, and I didn't. And it was no longer on Game Pass. So I had to buy the game, which might be why I am so critical. Because I'm less critical when it's on Game Pass and I don't have to buy it because you know what? If I can pick it up and play it for five or six hours and have fun with it and then I get bored and I put it down and never play it again, I had five or six hours of fun. Who cares if I feel like the game beyond that is unnecessary and that it should have been wrapped up? I got what I wanted out of it and I didn't spend any extra money to do that. Like I got to just enjoy the game for being a game for as long as I wanted to experience it. And that is a very specific and particular lens to look through when you're looking at games. It's why I no longer trust game reviewers. This experience has totally thrown me off of game reviewers. Like there might be a couple of game reviewers that I would kind of trust because they like the same kinds of games that I like and we share a lot of the same kinds of opinions and maybe I would be willing to check out those couple. But like they don't review every game that I want to play. So like I have a few like YouTubers that I'm a little compelled to go and like see their opinions. I like Co-Carnage a lot. 
Um, Co Carnage does a lot of like RPGs. He does a lot of stuff like Salasta, Crown of the Magister, and he does stuff like Shadow. I mean, he, I don't think he played Shadowrun, but you know, he does RPGs and he does things like its name escapes me. Baldur's Gate in the game that was like it. That is definitely on here. Um, but like the top down Baldur's Gate kind of games or, um, yeah, Torment Tides of Numenera. I can't see the name, but you show me that picture and I'm like, oh, it's Torment Tides of Numenera. So he plays stuff like that. Um, really interesting stuff, really, uh, stuff that appeals to me and his opinion on those games, I find very trustworthy because he's not like, oh, eight out of 10. He's like, he will break it down of like, here are the positives, here are the negatives. This is where it really excels in this genre. And if you're a fan of these kinds of games, this is what you could look to get out of it. Like, it is such a pragmatic way, which is why I tried to do this list as fairly as possible. That's why the whole section of it's incredible, it seemed like a good game, but it's not for me is. And that's why even some of these games that are something short of greatness, you might love, and there is nothing wrong with that. And you shouldn't take my opinion as the end-all be-all. Go watch people play the game. Um, go check things out. Go go learn more about it because it might speak to you in a way that it does not speak to me. Farming Simulator probably speaks to somebody. Not me, though. Inside, I said it was overrated, but there's there are a lot of people. It's probably one of their favorite games ever. So... You know, don't just listen to just anybody. Uh, feel free to take the consensus from a group of people and definitely try to listen to people who like the stuff that you like. By the way, when Seven Days Today gets that XNS update, I'm playing the F out of that game. Windjammers 2. I'm going to say this was incredible, but not for me. It is a 2D, I think it's 2D, like Frisbee fighting game. I don't even know how to explain it. It was a crazy. It's another one of those games where like, you know, there's like Maximilian dude who does like a lot of fighting games. This isn't exactly a fighting game, but it's like so close. Like you have moves and like hits and attacks and specials. That it seems like someone would have played it. No one did. Yakuza, Yakuza, Yakuza. They're all going into absolutely awesome. The Yakuza games, they're definitely games you got to be in the mood for. All right. These are long games. Some of them have 20 to 30 minute long cutscenes of just story and talking like your controller will shut off and you'll have to put new battery or you'll have to turn it back on and, and, and restart it. So that way it'll keep going. Like it has some real long scenes in it, but dude, the world is so alive in this game and it is so full of cool and, and it does the world like no other RPG. No other RPG has things set up like this where you go to a side activity and it's literally like it feels like it is the game. Like you, you walk into like the tiny race cars and you're like, oh, dude. This is the whole game now, like it, everything else, all the death and all like the, the life, the life, um, the life or death situations that you're in. They all fall aside because the new life or death situation is I have to win this tiny race car game against all these kids uh, and I have to send them home crying and I'm going to celebrate when I win. Like I'm going to get up and be like, ah, it's is is crazy. It's awesome. Highly recommended. Really good. Really good. Young Souls, underrated. I wish I had an underrated section. Um, I'm going to put it in something short of greatness. It might actually be amazing. It's got a fun, compelling story, sharp gameplay, sharp graphics, and it's co-op. Playing it with my son. But it didn't hold our attention. So I'm going to say it's missing something or it would have held our attention. You Suck at Parking is short of greatness. It has such a fun gameplay loop and it's got online multiplayer and it's got a lot of cool stuff. Probably would have played a lot more of it, but it made my son furious and he hated it. So we didn't play a lot of it. Uh, and it's not that fun in single player. I don't know what it would need to take it to the next level. I'd have to really sit down and brainstorm. But. I think it could do it. I think it could do it. But the thing is, it's all about parking. 
I don't know. Maybe just like a change up of the levels because the levels you kind of go in like random places. Give me a level that's like Fall Guys where we're all driving in a straight line and we have tons of fuel instead of only having a little bit. And we're essentially driving through like an obstacle course with checkpoints uh, to try to park at to be the first person to park at the end and the only parking spot. Something like that would be super cool. And I think would be the kind of thing that would take that game to the next level. And then finally, the Nonary games. I'm really tempted to put them into must plays, but they're not must plays. But God, they're good. Um, they are like uh, very similar to Danganronpa. They are very story based games, but you get a little bit of choice in this one. You get some choice. It's not a ton of choice. And a lot of the times your choice could lead to your death. Uh, and then you have to like go back in time and do things in a different way. But there's a bunch of the games and I only played one from beginning to end, but it's really cool. It was a lot of fun. Um, it's not quite Danganronpa fun and Danganronpa holds a special place in my heart because it was it was my first game like that. And it was coming at a time where I was like, man. You know, everyone was into um, the Hunger Games and I was like, this is kind of cool, but there's not enough killing. <laughs> Played Danganronpa. Plenty of killing in that one. Not a lot of people or anyone going to be walking out of the school that you're all killing each other in. Uh, and it's more devious. It was, it, you know, I don't like a lot of criminal stuff. This game is far more devious than like the Hunger Games. Where the Hunger Games is like very straightforward. You're going in and you're killing each other. Danganronpa is very along the lines of you guys don't have to kill each other. Be friends. Oh, wait, someone's dead. And that's it. That is going to be our ranking of every single Game Pass game of the year 2022. I'm surprised more are not down here. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you could skip pretty much all these games. There might be something worthwhile in them for you. There was not for me. And a lot of people love Outer Wilds. I'm, I love I love some of these games. And honestly, it's like frustration where they just do not give me a smooth frame rate. All I want is a smooth frame rate for the love of God. Give me a smooth frame rate. It's the only thing I'm envious of on the computer. I don't like using the keyboard and mouse. I don't like sitting at a desk. I, I don't like being like, like sitting there playing like this. I don't like, I like chilling with a controller in my hands and having a good time. Just like make it right. Like I, if I ever have the money, I might one day be forced to buy a computer and then just play with a controller. But I hate setting up computer games, dude. I hate getting into the game and like being like, okay, let's tweak this, tweak this, tweak this. It's like, it's nice when it's, I, I want to do it when it's just like one, one option away from like being good. Like maybe if I could just tweak something a little bit, I'd have a totally perfect frame rate, but I don't know, whatever. In any case, uh, the only ones I really want to go over here, uh, you know, all the short of greatness ones, the ones that are great, but for someone else. Ones that are just awesome. These are the ones that I had the most fun with, I think, all year long. Vampire Survivors. High on Life is number one. Tunic would be number two, I do believe. Uh, Goragoa might be number three. Uh, followed by maybe Despot's Game. And then, uh, oh, I mean, Vampire Survivors, you can go back up there. Um... Ooh, Scorn might even be ahead of Vamp. I played Scorn more than Vampire Survivor. I don't know if it was fun, though. It was messed up. And the rest of them are in no particular order. Really, only look at, like, the top two to three. Even then, Gorgoa might be in front of Vampire Survivor. I don't know. Anyway, High on Life and Tunic were the two best games all year. That's my opinion. High on Life and Tunic were incredible High on Life is so underrated. What makes me happy is that people are downloading and playing it because it deserves the love. It is, it's so good. It is so good. And Tunic, also incredible. But all these games up here, I had a tremendous amount of fun with and they were very memorable. And uh, you know what? To be fair, all of the absolutely awesome games were very memorable. And all of the incredible, but for someone else, were all very memorable games. These all had super awesome and compelling things. Quite frankly, what I can say is I had a great time playing Game Pass games this year. 
Um, full disclosure, by the end of the year, man, it, it sure was sucking the fun out of some games. Because I would have games that I'd want to sit down and play. And I'd be like, oh, but I can't just sit down and play it. I got to set up my computer and then I got to go and make sure that I am presentable. Um, I can't just like roll out of bed and play a game. I got to like set up my camera or I got to get the microphone ready. Um, I have to sit in like a certain place so that I can use my microphone. I can't just like chillax and relax with the game and play it or the games that I really was having fun with. I was like, well, I really want to record these and put these up on my channel. Um, but that was taking away some of the fun of the games. Um, and then there were some games where I wanted to put time into them, but it's like, I got to go and do, you know, spend two hours making a video on the next game and the other four games that came out this week. And by the time I get to the end of it, like, I don't want to play any video games. Um, so I will say if you are thinking about getting into YouTubing or making less plays or going onto Twitch or stuff like that, uh, be careful about the way that you do it. Because I think it would be very easy to remove the fun for yourself from playing video games. Like, I had to learn so many games in their systems this year that I don't feel like I ever really... I mean, if, uh, there's a handful of times that this is not true. But I felt like for the most part, a lot of the games where they were like complex and where I had to like sit down and really get into them, I felt like I really wasn't giving them as much time as I wanted to because I had eight other games that I had that were also complex that I had to totally learn all the new controls and all the new mechanics. And I had to learn the story and the characters and I had to go through it. And then by the time I do those other eight games, when I go back to the game that was really cool, but complex and I was kind of getting into it, I don't remember how to play it anymore. Um, and suddenly it's, I'm relearning that game all over again too. But then I still have a new, there's new games coming out in a week and I got to learn all those. And it made a lot of games fall to the wayside that I really like. Maybe some of these games would have been higher up um, if I would have given them more time. And that's my fault. Like, I'm, I'm not it's not it's not like I'm not saying like, oh, there's so many games that I, I couldn't appreciate them. That's not true. It was very clear to me within just reading the descriptions of some of the games or picking up a game and playing it for five to 10 minutes, whether or not I was enjoying it. Like you can tell five minutes into a game, like eh, maybe this isn't for me or maybe this is for me, but I'm not in the mood for it right now. But because I had to get the videos out, I had to play it when I wasn't in the mood for it. Yeah, no, it just is what it is. But anyway, I still had a blast like all year going through all these. This is some of the most games I've ever played an entire year. Uh, and I played more games than this, by the way. I, I played more for sure. I bought some games. Um, I played some of the free uh, gold games that came out this year. Like I, I had a lot of really good times. And now that I'm kind of not doing all the games and I don't think I'm going to do that again this year. Um, I think I'm going to be able to find a lot more enjoyment and just focusing going back to what I was doing um, and focusing on games one at a time. Like I loved recording all of Halo Infinite because I, I was just chilling out and playing Halo Infinite. I wasn't trying to learn anything or do anything special or or I wasn't put, even putting in a ton of effort in like the recording or anything like that. I was just having fun. Um, and so make sure you're having fun too. And there's a lot of games to have fun with. So go and check them out. That's going to be it. It's ranking every game past game of 2022. I will make this game uh, available on tier maker uh, because it is currently hidden. I do believe and uh, I'm going to make it open. So if anyone else wants to go and uh, make their own ranking, you want to share it with me. Um, I would absolutely love to see it. I'd love to see like where your rankings fall and what you like. Um, or just tell me about it. Did you have like one or two or three games this year that really spoke to you? Talk to me about it. I'd love to know. I guess that's going to be the end of it. So thank you so very much for joining me. It has been an absolute pleasure. Put some good out in the world. I hope some good comes back to you. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye.